Welcome back friends uh, to our channel and today we will uh, start with a new topic uh, in the subject of pathology and this topic is a uh, thyroid injury. My name is Dr. John and our channel is uh, Dr. Manxman so don't forget to subscribe our channel in order to uh, get a lot of upcoming videos concerning uh, pathology. In our subjects, uh, we will uh, go through the following outline. We will define, classify, and we'll see the causes of syringal. Also, we'll see the morphology and the mechanism and the response to this uh, syringal. But before going to that outline, I prepared to you a very short hint that summarizes to understand what we are going to uh, see about so you become more familiar and uh, you will not get bored by the sessions. Here we see that is a normal cell that is under normal homeostatic mechanisms. But a cell is uh, subjected to different internal and external uh, stress. And once a uh, cell encounters stress, we will undergo what we call an adaptation. And uh, uh, if, a if the cell will uh, be able to uh, adapt to that adaptation, will uh, return to after after being subjected to a stress will return to its normal uh to its normal status but uh, once it will be unable to adapt will undergo what we call the cell injury but in sometimes there are some injuries stimulus which cause direct uh, the cell injury and the cell injury can be reversible or irreversible let's start mm -hmm. with the reversible cell injury Reversible cell injury occur when the stress is mild and transient. But after that, it means a cell will be reversed to its normal uh, status. Uh, after encountering uh, mild or transient stress, then it will reverse to its normal, its normal uh, status. But once the cell encounters what we call the severe and the very progressive uh, stress, means the stress so severe and, and stay to the cell for a long time uh, cell will encounter what called the irreversible uh, injury and the irreversible cell injury is manifested uh, or consequently will be manifested at the third days what will occur here is the third days and the third days may be either a necrosis or apoptosis and sometimes may be uh, infection as a, a illustration is uh, that, that I borrowed from the Hashmoan book that you uh, provide to start is that here is a normal cell. If there is, a, a, let's start with this case. If there is an alteration, a, alteration of the functional demand of the cell, a cell will undergo what we call uh, the adaptation. And the adaptation may be uh, manifested either at the atrophy, hypertrophy, hyperplasia, metaplasia. Or dysplasia. But once the stress is removed, it means the normal cell will be restored. It means that the, uh, the, the alteration of functional demand is a, is a reversible one. Is a reversible. It means the cell will be restored to its normal uh, conditions. Also, let's uh, see about the case if there is a mild to moderate stress. This we call what we call a reversible cell injury. For example, if there occur uh, degenerations, subcellular alterations, and intracellular accumulations, a cell can be reversed to its normal, uh, its normal conditions once the stress is removed and a repair and a healing take place. So the cell will be uh, reversed to its normal, its normal uh, condition. Or oh, on the third case, it occur if there is a severe and very persistent stress. This will consequence with that to the uh, irreversible cell injury. And the irreversible cell injury is usually manifested at the cell days. The cell days can be either necrosis or apoptosis or infection. This is another uh, illustration. Here, here is a normal cell, and this one is the normal cell. So, here, suppose this is a irreversible cell injury. Reversible cell injury, for example, if okay, there is a swelling of the endoplasmic reticulum and the mitochondria, and sometimes you have the uh, membrane breaks, 
they also there is a disruption in the myelin figures. These are the conditions that can that to the reversible cell injury. But once this is progressive, will that what we call irreversible? It means we will uh, direct call the cell death, which is uh, manifested by necrosis or sometimes by apoptosis. Let's go uh, to start uh, from our outline after looking at a very short summarized hint about our sessions. Uh, for the case of the definition of the cell injury, cell injury refers to the sequence of events that occur within the cell that uh, follow either after the excessive physiologic, physiologic stress or pathologic uh, stimuli. And uh, this it may be due to a variety of, stre of stresses, as I said that a, stress a cell encounter different uh, stress from the internal environment or external environment. What you cause to, to the cell injury is uh, when the stress when the stress exceeds the limit of the adaptive response or when adaptation to such a stimuli is not possible. If uh, that stress will exceed the adaptive response of, of the cell or when the stress uh, when the stress is not uh, is not uh, well adapted by a cell, that will that what we call the cell ranger. And uh, let's see about the classification of the cell ranger. Cell ranger, as I have said, may be reversible or irreversible. For this case of this reversible cell injury, it means there is a there is a mild to moderate stress, and the stress is a transient. It means it does not stay for a long time within the cell. As you see, this is a normal cell. If there is a mild to moderate stress, the stress should be transient, not stay at a very long time within the cell, will cause what we call the reversible cell injury, which uh, uh, can be manifested as there is uh, degenerations, subcellular alterations, and intracellular accumulations. Once the stress is removed, what occurs is a repair and healing, then the normal cell will be restored. For the case of the irreversible, it means we have high persistence of stimulus and the high severity of the stimulus. This will be that what we call the irreversible cell injury. It means a cell after encountering such stimulus will uh, consequently express what we call the cell death, and this is uh, an irreversible cell injury. Let's see about the causes of the cell injury. The cell injury can be caused by several causes, and uh, these causes can be either exogenous causes or endogenous causes, and sometimes can be congenital or acquired. Let's start with the exogenous causes. Exo means out and or uh, external. So these, uh, when we say about the exogenous causes, these are the uh, causes that result from the external environment of the cell. For example, the physical agents. But for the case of the endogenous causes, these uh, occur uh, from the internal environment within the cells. For example, the metabolic factors and the congenital or acquired. Uh, for example, the uh, sickle cell anemia that is uh, is acquired uh, is is a congenital uh, abnormality that can cause cell injury. As we see that the sickle cell anemia it affects more the this red blood cell and cause the injuries to this lead blood cell. And also we have salicemia major and salicemia minor. So these are the, congen are the congenital acquired condition that can cause cell injury. Let's see, uh, we have seen that uh, the cell injury can be caused from the exogenous or endogenous or acquired or the congenital uh, Anomalies, but uh, let's see the list of these causes of the syringer. Uh, we will start with the physical agents. Example for physical agents, as we have seen that physical agents are the exogenous causes. For example, mechanical trauma. I tried to show you a picture about this one. It means that someone hand has encountered. We see the. Uh, what we call the mechanical trauma by a knife. So you see there is a bleeding of blood. And the bleeding of blood uh, occur after uh, the mechanical trauma uh, that is 
be shown to be uh, affecting the cells, causing cell injuries and therefore breeding. And also temperature extreme, sudden change in atmospheric pressure, radiation and electric shock, these are the physical agents. But there are the chemical agents and the drugs. There are, the new, there are innumerable chem, chemicals that infect the cell injury. For example, glucose, salt, oxygen, poison like arsenic, cyanide, mercury, yes. And also some of the pollutants, insecticides and herbicides. These uh, chemicals can affect you, they can, can, can be accompanied or have shown to be associated with the cell injury. And some of the infectious agents, for example, some of the microbes, especially those uh, intracellular uh, obligate microbes like uh, Mycobacterium tuberculosis, Mycobacterium tuberculosis, Mycobacterium repri. These are the microbes that are uh, have been shown to be associated with the cellular injuries. And also some of the parasites, like the plasmodium and sparum parasites, this is that divide, divide within the cell. As it called the cellular injury. Also, some of the immunologic reactions. The immune system is a double-edged sword. Once you say the double-edged sword, it means on one side is uh, advantages and on another side is disadvantages. On advantages, uh, the immune system is a defense is a defense mechanism of the body. It means uh, the defensive functions primary. But on the other side, it can be uh, injurious. For example, anaphylaxis and autoimmunity. So these are injuries and then then it causes what we call the cell injury. Although there are the genetic derangement. Here we, we talk about the congenital acquired causes of the cell injury. For example, the close malformation that occur in the Down syndrome and something the subtraction at the DNA day of that occur in the uh, sickle cell anemia. Another cause is about the nutritional imbalances. The nutritional imbalances, if there is a deficiency or excessiveness of the components that um, constitute nutrients within the body. For example, a vitaminosis and a primary energy malnutrition, PEM. Also, if there is excessivity of the nutrients within the body, it can be harmful to the cell, like hyperlipidemia, which is associated with atherosclerosis and hypervitaminosis. <clears throat> By saying so, uh, this was just a, a first part of our sessions, because I have tried to part this session into different parts because it's a long one and I had to make you not bored by the decision so I try to do so so don't forget subscribe our channel <coughs> and we come to our second session about the survey in general thanks